The OP1 and the Digitone, this makes for a gnarly combo. Their features just really complement each other. The OP1 has a very unique workflow and is a sampling beast, whereas the Digitone can't sample, but it picks up where the OP1 lacks sequencing capabilities. In terms of sound design, the Digitone is very deep, very FME sounding. So that brings the electronic element to the mix, whereas the OP1 is filled with acoustic sounds, which brings the realistic acoustic element to the mix. With the two of them together, you could come up with something like this. Unfortunately, nothing is perfect, and there's two reasons that stand out to me as to why this isn't the perfect combo. One, as expensive as the OP-1 is, if you want to sync it to other instruments, you need an external piece. It's like a USB to MIDI port which unfortunately I haven't received yet. Also, if you're trying to do what I'm doing on the same mission as me, which is spontaneously create music Dallas and then bounce it into your DAW after the fact, the OP-1 makes this process a little bit more difficult. With the Digitone, you're able to bounce these individual tracks into your DAW using a software called Overbridge. Unfortunately, that software doesn't exist for the OP-1, but let's take a deeper look and break down how I made this beat. Starting with the OP-1, which I've covered extensively on YouTube, by the way. The OP-1 is doing four things in this track. Track one is a sample. Track two is another sample. And track three is drums. Altogether, it sounds like this. So it all started off with this sample here. The most beautiful choir in the world, and this sample really stood out to me, so I ran it through the OP-1. When you upload a sample into the OP-1, it's automatically chopped on this keyboard. I chopped everything on the white keys because I just find that to be a lot easier, and I tuned everything down to semitones. So you can hear the difference from the original. This just sounded better to my ears, and it gave this choir a little bit more of an electronic feel. I added an LFO and an effects to this sample as well. First thing is the effects, I added nitro and increased the resonance to make it a bit more shiny and airy in the high end. And this is a trick that I use a lot. I added the tremolo LFO. Seeing as the kick is playing four on the floor, this adds like a side chainy quarter note pumping effect. So here it is without. So the sample already had this effect. This accentuates it even more. So it's really pumping. And then there's track two, this one. I found a sample that was in the right key and essentially did the exact same thing as on track one minus the LFO. So nitro and I just found a chop that worked well alongside track one. On track three, I just have a high end layer of drums. So hi-hat as well as claps that I could bring in and out as I please. I basically always use Endless to program my drums. It's a go-to of mine. Here's a video on that. I think it's essential to have drum layers like this for tasty little lifts in sections. It's just always a handy tool to have access to. And finally, I have a synth preset saved onto three. This is the Pulse Engine. Not gonna lie, this sounds better through the microcosm. <laughs> I mean, what does it? This is something that I could play freehand at any point during the track, which once again is a nice way to lift or glue sections together. That's about all the elements from the OP-1. From there, it's all about utilizing the master button during the performance. So that's this button here. Here I have control over each track. So right now, track three is the only one that's not muted. I could just unmute those like that. <laughs> is for master effects. I currently have nitro, which affects the entire track.
even though these two samples are pretty much playing through the entire track, I still think of them as like toppings or glue on top of what the Diggy Tone is doing with sequencing. With this setup, my approach to the Diggy Tone is definitely a bit more square and section. And it does that so well, which is once again why these two really fit together like a glove. take a look at the square or sequenciness of the Diggy Tone. As I'm sure you can imagine, each sequence gets progressively more and more intense with more layers until we get to what I guess we could call the bridge or the B section, which doesn't happen until the sixth pattern here. The first sequence starts with kick, bass drum, and arpeggio, which is actually just a perk part. We'll get into that a bit later. Sequence two is the same thing, but with a heavier kick drum. Then the hi-hat comes in. Then we have snare. You guys get the point. There's not really much I could show you in this respect. I'm just layering things as the sequence goes on. If you want to look into more depth about the sound pool and how I actually program these drums into the track, that's a video for you. Pro tip for sequencing. All the sequences on the white keys are copies of what's on the black keys, but without kick, which once again, makes for a great transition. If you'd rather, you could just hit pattern in whichever track you want to mute or unmute. Pro tip number two is using an arpeggio with your perks like I've done here. If you look at the grid here, you can see that the arpeggio is only taking one slot out of a two bar pattern. So you have that much more space to program your drums. So if I go to another sequence, that's exactly what I've done. This is the arpeggio and then you have all these drums here from the sound pool. Four tracks isn't really enough and this is just a clever way to get around the conundrum that is lack of space with the diggy tone. Another important thing to point out is adding fill notes, which I do more and more as the sequences progress. Let me explain. If you look at this trig specifically, you'll see that it says fill over top of condition, which means that this trig will only play in fill mode. So how do you trigger fill mode? You press on page while the pattern is playing. So let's play through without the trigger. Okay, check the kick drum at the end. This is with fill. It's like a 16 note thing there. So just like I'm adding more and more layers as these sequences go on, I'm thinking the same way with fill notes. I'm adding more fills going into sections, more intensity. Another great tool for transitions is the Diggy Tone Master Effects, which you could bounce back and forth from very easily. Make sure to save your current pattern parameters by hitting function and yes. And now when you hold down MIDI, you could jump to these effects up here, let's say delay, and you're adding this to the entire track. So let's hear it. not sure if you guys caught that I hit function and reload to go back to the original parameters just another option for transitions and adding tension and release to your tracks so now you got your beats all nice and slick everything's programmed it's clean now what about actually combining these two and performing with them honestly just like anything else it's about repetition knowing your instruments and just practicing and getting better you have to get fluid with the op1 and diggy tone controls <laughs> Master effects on the OP1.
Master effects with the diggy tone. The ultimate goal is to get fluid with both of these individually as well as together so that when you're performing you're not thinking too much about the technical aspect your head is in the music and where the music is going this is something that i'm working on as well with all of this new gear that i have and each beat that i come up with it just becomes more and more fluid so that's that's the secret practice 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 i hope this video helped you guys out if you have any questions i encourage you to ask them in the comment section i'll make sure to get back to you if you're interested in maybe purchasing any of this gear and would like to support this channel at the same time i invite you to use the affiliate link in the description. I'll see you in a few days. Cheers.